the concept of Lewis structures is very, very important. It's a very simple way of thinking about the formation of molecules, but it's a very powerful way. We couple the idea of Lewis structures with the concept of valence shell electron pair repulsion, then we can predict exactly what shape most main group molecules form. The only electrons that are important in atoms are the outermost or valence electrons. So the chemical bond consists of a pair of electrons. So when chemical bonds form, they form through sharing electrons between two atoms. Now if we look at the first and second periods of the periodic table, these are the number of valence electrons of each of these atoms. The chemistry can be driven by a favourable filling or, or emptying of that valence shell. So the most favourable configurations of electrons are those where you either have an entirely empty valence shell or you have an entirely full valence shell. And the best examples of a full valence shell are the so-called noble gases. The octet rule is this drive to achieve a full valence shell corresponding to eight electrons around the central atom. There is a driving force for this to occur. OK, so let's take a very simple example, fluorine. It has seven valence electrons. If you were to construct a Lewis structure, the first step is to draw your atom with the number of valence electrons. So here's fluorine with seven valence electrons. Here's a second atom of fluorine with seven valence electrons. So Lewis tells us that we want to achieve an eight electron valence configuration, an octet of electrons, and we can do that by sharing electrons to make pairs. You share those two odd electrons here, making a bonding pair, and now if you count the number of electrons around each fluorine atom, it adds up to eight. There's a bonding pair here, but there are still three lone pairs around the fluorine. And this can become important later when we're predicting the structure of molecules. Now let's take oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16. It has six valence electrons. Two species coming together with six valence electrons. So it can form one bond by sharing one electron from each of the atoms. So that will form a single bond, but there will still then only be seven electrons around oxygen. So what can oxygen do? It can form another bond through the remaining odd electrons, so you end up with a double bonded species with two pairs of bonding electrons between the atoms. What we then have is a double bond. Now, are there any unpaired electrons in that Lewis structure? No. This is our first example of a heterodiatomic molecule. These two atoms are different. Carbon is in group 14, has four valence electrons. Oxygen, still in, still in group 16, has six valence electrons. If we bring these two species together using Lewis theory, then what we would predict is a triple bond between the two species, and a lone pair on carbon and a lone pair on oxygen. Dinitrogen is isoelectronic to carbon monoxide, meaning it has exactly the same number of valence er electrons surrounding its bonding atoms. And as soon as they're isoelectronic, then you can expect them to be isostructural, to have the same structure as well. What governs the shape of a molecule? Valence shell, electron pair, repulsion. So we can predict the shape of a molecule by considering how many electron pairs they are and how they're going to be repelling. So let's give ourselves a very simple example in the first instance. You start with the Lewis structure. Methane consists of four hydrogen atoms and a carbon atom. Carbon has four valence electrons. So you'd start off by drawing carbon with four electrons around it. You then take your hydrogen with one electron each and put those around the molecule. A Lewis structure tells you nothing about the stereochemistry of your molecule. The other thing you need to look for are, are there any lone pairs? So what we need to do is to arrange four species in space so that they are as far apart as possible. And what you will end up with is a tetrahedral arrangement of your ligands around the central atom. The only electrons in the valence shell influence molecular geometry. 
and in the lowest energy configuration, these groups are as far apart as possible. Non-bonding pairs of electrons, lone pairs, because they're closer to the central atom, actually repel more strongly than bonding pairs. If you have a steric number of two, you have a linear arrangement. If you have a steric number of three, the way that you arrange these groups is in a trigonal fashion. If you have five groups, the way to arrange them that so are as far apart in space as possible is a trigonal bipyramid. If you want to arrange six groups in space as far apart as possible, then you're going to have a central atom in a, with an octahedral disposition of your, your extra groups bonded to it.